Are you confused by the fourth industrial revolution? Have you heard all the consultancy talk about what the fourth industrial revolution is? If you want to understand a real practical example of the opportunity the fourth industrial revolution presents in education, stick with me. Hey everyone, I'm Yanesh from Gender Mark Automation. And on this channel, we talk about the risks and opportunities digitization and the fourth industrial revolution bring. So let's get stuck into today's video. In this video, we talk about what and why the fourth industrial revolution is so important for Africa, network businesses and the concept of gaffonomics, an example of a network business, the human impact of the third industrial revolution, and a network business for education in Africa that is able to deliver world-class education to underprivileged children for less than $10 a month. So what is the fourth industrial revolution? And to be honest with you, I'm not qualified to answer that question. If you want, you can check out the link in the description below. There's tons and tons of content out there about what the fourth industrial revolution is. For me, what's more important is why we have the fourth industrial revolution. Turns out, Industry 4.0 is a term that was coined in Germany by the Fraunhofer Institute. They were tasked to try and make German and Western manufacturing more efficient. But the more important question for me was, why was it so-called inefficient? I mean, I've been fortunate enough to go through many, many factories in Germany, and those are some of the most efficient factories I've ever seen. Um, and I'm not too sure how much more efficient you could actually get. And through the research, it's, the evidence is pretty clear. The biggest challenge the Western world struggles with is the rising cost of labor. Why is the labor cost rising in Europe? The answer is pretty simple. The populations are getting smaller. Check out this population pyramid of Western Europe. So it makes sense why labor costs are going higher and higher, because populations are getting smaller and smaller. So what does that mean? It means that manufacturing, banking, food, retail, doesn't matter what industry you come from, you got to do more with less people because there are less people to do the job. And how do you do that? You automate. And that's the whole premise of Industry 4.0, which is now transformed into this fourth industrial revolution. And if you look at the Western world and the context that they come from, it makes perfect sense. If you have less people, you've got to automate. So all of these technologies, AI, VR, augmented reality, all of the so-called fourth industrial revolution technologies are all centered around trying to do more with less people. And that makes perfect sense. But what does that mean for Africa and the developing world as a whole? So check out this population pyramid of Africa. As you can see, it's completely opposite. If we follow the fourth industrial revolution as prescribed by all the know-it-alls, we'll have a massive issue in Africa. We will have massive social unrest. As it is in South Africa, we have a massive youth unemployment challenge. We have a massive education crisis. Copying the fourth industrial revolution as is will be a complete disaster. So is the fourth industrial revolution a huge threat for Africa? Well, maybe not. I think you've got to look at it a little differently. I think you've got to understand what the challenges are in Africa and use the fourth industrial revolution technologies like AI and machine learning, uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, uh, software as a service, cloud computing, all of these technologies that are all centered around the fourth industrial revolution, but use them in a different way to answer the challenges Africa has. Another very important element that needs to be understood is this concept called gaffonomics. Google, Apple, Facebook, and Amazon economics. They understand something that most businesses don't understand. And if you want to find out more information about gaffonomics, it's not my ideas, check out the link in the description below. So what is gaffonomics? Gaffonomics is all about how these big four actually run their business. And if you take a step back and have a look at it, what they are at their essence are networked businesses. And for us, the fourth industrial revolution is very much about a networked economy, a distributed economy. So let's take a closer look at what the third industrial revolution was from a business model perspective. So from a business model perspective, the third industrial revolution was very much focused on globalization. What happens is you have these big 
manufacturing entities that then set up satellite factories in different locations so that they could be closer to their customer. This also results in their supplier base moving closer to their satellite factories. But at, the, at its essence, it still feeds back into the main head office, the big mothership, so to speak. One of the other important distinctions is what third industrial revolution companies value versus fourth industrial revolution companies. Things like asset ownership is a very important to third industrial revolution thinking. So owning the building that you operate in was always an important part and a sign of success. Whereas if you look at fourth industrial revolution companies, owning the network and owning the connection is far more valuable. The best example of this is the reason why Facebook bought WhatsApp for $19 billion, despite its turnover only being $100 million. What they did was they bought 1.5 billion connections. There was no asset involved. There was no financial logic behind buying a $100 million company for $19 billion. Another differentiation between third industrial revolution thinking and fourth industrial revolution thinking is localized work versus distributed work. Fourth industrial revolution organizations understand that doing work in a distributed manner is far more efficient because that allows you to get the best people to do the right work no matter where they are. Everybody knows the third industrial revolution was about mass production. There was a big focus on standardizing products so that they could be produced at high volumes over and over and over, and that reduced the unit cost. Fourth Industrial Revolution is very much about individualized production, where your product is completely customized based on the individual's needs. The best example of this is how Nike have changed their view on customizing products. You can now go online and order your customized pair of Nike. They manufactured specifically to your requirements and ship it straight to you. Proprietary value has also been a third industrial revolution concept where everybody wants to patent their great idea so that nobody else copies it. Looking at the fourth industrial revolution, there's this shared value. Uh, everybody contributes and everybody shares what they do. Look at the whole open source community. Look at YouTube. I mean, the amount of free content available on YouTube is amazing. In fact, the majority of what I've learned about the fourth industrial revolution, I learned for free on YouTube. So that's a key differentiator between the third industrial revolution patent everything concept versus the fourth industrial revolution shared value concept. Scarcity control versus abundance management is a key differentiator between the third and fourth industrial revolution as well. We come from a society where, for example, information was really scarce. I mean, we had to hunt through encyclopedias to get information on biology or the Amazon forest, as an example. But nowadays, you just simply go onto Google, type in Amazon forest, and you get an abundance of information. And we've moved from this concept of scarcity control, where we had to uh, really scavenge and look for information. Whenever we got it, we would hoard that information to really abundance management, where, for example, Google have algorithms that look at my location and my interests. And when I type in Amazon forest, it gives me the information that's more relevant to me. So they are managing the abundance of information. So let's look at an example of a networked business. So here's another picture that we're all pretty familiar with. One minute to get picked up by my Uber. So let's dive into Uber a little bit and really try and understand how they set up their business. So the first node is the connection to Google Maps. I think everybody understands that Uber is based on your location, it shares information with the driver, it shares information with the rider on your various locations. So Uber uses Google Maps. So the next node is Amazon Web Services. Although Uber don't use Amazon Web Services anymore, they did start out using Amazon Web Services. And what this enabled Uber to do is set up a software business without ever buying a server. So what this offered Uber was to scale to almost any country in the world. The next node is the App Stores. Google Play and the App Store. What this has allowed Uber to do is create an app on each of the platforms that basically gives them access to potentially 3.5 billion customers. The next node are the payment gateways, Google Pay, Apple Pay, and obviously MasterCard and Visa, and in various other countries they've integrated different payment platforms. And by leveraging all of these technologies and networking them all together, 
Uber were able to create the largest taxi company in the world without ever leaving their location and owning a car. Another critical node in this network is the rating system. Everybody's familiar how this works. If you've had a, a safe, clean trip, you would typically give the driver a five-star rating. If the driver drove like a maniac and car was dirty and stank of alcohol, you would typically give them a one-star rating. And likewise, the driver would rate the rider. So if the rider was rude and obnoxious and dirtied the car, you would typically get a one-star rating. But if the, if the rider paid on time, was friendly, the driver would rate the rider five stars. And this is a very, very important quality management system that Uber have introduced. And this is what builds the brand around the ecosystem. So I can tell you for sure, from my own personal experience, before Uber, I would have never gotten into a stranger's car and asked them to take me to the airport. That would have, that's, that's unheard of. However, I do that every second day now where I call on my app, some random driver arrives at my door, I jump in the car, he drops me at the airport, and we rate each other. And what this rating system does, it changes our behavior towards the system. So driver wants to drive safe, wants to be on time, and wants to be friendly and keep his car clean because he wants a five-star rating. Because he knows the more five-star ratings he gets, the more trips he's gonna get. And the same thing with the rider. The more five-star ratings the rider gets, the, the quicker his pickup times become. So that's a digital quality management system that's critical in these network businesses. Some of the additional notes that Uber have since added are things like dynamic pricing, where based on supply and demand, Uber would change the pricing of trips to encourage drivers to go where there's high demand. And these are some of the fourth industrial revolution AI machine learning technologies that are used in the back end to completely automate these processes. If you take a step back and have a look at what Uber have actually done, they haven't created any of the technologies on the network. They've simply orchestrated them together. One of the key elements of the fourth industrial revolution from our perspective is network orchestrating existing technologies. And for us, this is the opportunity for developing countries, especially in Africa, is understanding that using the fourth industrial revolution technologies, network orchestrating them together to solve our specific challenges is the opportunity. Let's take a closer look at what Uber have actually done in South Africa. They've created 13,000 jobs for budding entrepreneurs that want to get up and do something. I don't know of any private organization or government institute that has created that many opportunities in the last five years. In fact, they've had so much resistance from both private and government institutes, and despite that, they still created those 13,000 jobs. And in our opinion, this is the opportunity understanding the fourth industrial revolution technologies, understanding how to orchestrate them together to create the opportunities for the bottom half of the pyramid that I had spoken about earlier. One of the things that's not often spoken about when comparing the third and the fourth industrial revolution to each other is the human impact the third industrial revolution has had. Take for example, third industrial revolution manufacturing. We introduced this concept of standardized work for all workers on a production line. And basically what that means is we try to make the human into a robot. They have to repeat the task sometimes thousands of times a day over and over and over again. That is not a human concept. That is a robotic concept. Another example of putting human into boxes is vehicle insurance. So if I'm a 35 year old male that drives a Volkswagen Polo and I live in a specific neighborhood, I get charged a fixed insurance premium. And the next guy that's exactly the same as me gets charged exactly the same premium. But what if I drive like a reckless maniac and the other guy drives like Miss Daisy? Is that fair for us to be paying exactly the same insurance premium? It isn't. The risks are completely different. A fourth industrial revolution insurance company approaches this very differently. And there's a good example of this in South Africa called Discovery Insure. What they do is they put a sensor in your car or they monitor my driving behavior from an app on my phone. And based on my driving behavior, my insurance premium is adapted in the form of discounts for fuel. Basically what this is, is data-driven behavioral change. 
And for us, that is the essence of the fourth industrial revolution. Our current education system is very much a third industrial revolution concept, where we try to put humans into boxes. And if you, for example, are 12 years old, you're supposed to be in grade seven, and you're supposed to perform maths at a certain level. So if you above that level, then you're considered gifted or clever, but if you're below that level, you're considered stupid. But that's not right. Every human is different. If you take a child from the day they're born to when you become an adult, we all understand that we're different. We hope the fourth industrial revolution education system adapts to the individual, the current environment they're in, and the needs of the society around them. For us, this is certainly possible with the concepts the fourth industrial revolution offer. As an example, imagine a big motor manufacturer wanted to set up a factory in a specific town. Why couldn't we adapt the curriculum of the students that go to school in that town based on the needs of that factory that's about to be built? For us, this is a huge opportunity to make an adaptable education system based on the, the society they live in and the economy that they partake in. So is there an opportunity to Uberize education for the developing world? Absolutely, we believe there is. So let's take a closer look at what this Uber for education actually looks like. So the center of our network business is a tablet that we've written some firmware for that allows us to take complete control of the device. Because we want our education platform to be scalable to any country in the world, we've adopted a software as a service concept using Amazon Web Services. Obviously with education, we need data and we need connectivity. And to do this, we've, we've contacted the two biggest network providers in South Africa, MTN and Vodacom, and we've worked with them to create a data and connectivity package that's really cost effective. So being an education device, security is absolutely critical. So we've worked with a few partners to build a security bubble around our network. This allows us to manage what websites can be accessed through the device and also allows us to software lock each SIM card into the device so that the SIM card can't be used in another device. As with any education platform, a content management system is critical and we've written a very simple content management platform that allows any teacher or lecturer or educational institute to simply upload any, any form of content for their individual students. We've also integrated a video platform called Big Blue Button. This allows teachers to have remote classes, breakout sessions, whiteboard sessions with all the students or individual students exactly as they would in a real life classroom. The next node on the network is Google Classroom. Google Classroom is a fantastic platform that allows teachers to create and assign assessments to students. It also allows students to complete those assessments and submit them through the platform. During the pilot project where we rolled these devices out to over a thousand learners in some of the most underprivileged areas of our country, we quickly realized there's an emotional barrier to adopting this kind of technology. And for us, this was the missing link. We also saw this as a huge opportunity to humanize this networked business. As support during the handover process of these devices, we enrolled a couple of engineering students from the University of Witz. Cheap labor, I say. But unbeknownst to us, these guys brought the X factor. What we didn't realize was that these guys could come from a similar background to the children we were giving the devices to, which made them far more relatable than any of us on the team. And this, for us, was the X factor. This was making the fourth industrial revolution more human, bringing the human element onto the network. And since then, they've started up a support and service organization called Kaizen Unlimited, and they are now one of the official nodes on our network. One of the important nodes on the ecosystem was the integration of the various educational web platforms available. Our vision is to allow every child, irrespective of their background, access to the best education platforms there are in the world. And to do that, we built in a web platform integrator. And this allows us to integrate almost any educational platform there is in the world and allow us to connect the most underprivileged child to this web platform. And to date, we've integrated and tested over 40 different web platforms from around the world. The next node on the ecosystem we're currently developing is a recommendation engine. 
This is something very similar to Uber's dynamic pricing model, where we'll be collecting individual data from each of the children on the ecosystem and making recommendations to the teacher based on those individual performance, what web platforms those children should get access to. What this allows us to do is create a completely individualized and dynamic education platform that allows education to be delivered to each child based on their individual needs. This is something that we're really proud of and we really believe how the fourth industrial revolution should be adopted in the developing world. So in conclusion, we've set up a network business using fourth industrial revolution technology that delivers an educational ecosystem to the most underprivileged children for less than $10 a month. We have a number of other Uberization concepts, one specifically for Uberization of manufacturing, but I'm not gonna bore you with that one now. If you wanna find out more about our education ecosystem that we've built, it's called Odin Education. Check out the link to Odin Education below. If you want to find out more on how Odin Education can help you, click on the inquiries button on the website and we can set up a one-on-one -on -one session and talk you through the details of the system. If you agree or disagree with what I'm saying, leave some comments below. I'd really appreciate your feedback. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. We hope to grow the channel with more useful information to help you unlock the opportunities within the fourth industrial revolution.